everyone, and welcome to another episode of Career Podcast. Today, we have Mr. Ricardo, Ricardo Maseroni. He's a 3D and digital artist from Milano, Italy, mostly working on fantasy and sci-fi, sci-fi genre. In this episode, we're going to discuss thoroughly about general trends in digital and 3D art scene and future of it, and also some other stuff. And for the full version of the podcast, you can visit any major podcast platform and just search Career Podcast. So I have a brief introduction to our week audience. Now, would you please introduce yourself in your own time for our audience in case I missed out on anything? Okay. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me here. Um, I'm a set designer, actually, for a theater opera and classic ballet mainly but i also have the chance to work as a concept artist for concepts like indie video games and some movie all right now with that being said let's move to the first question tell us about your journey were you originally studying art and design or you were pursuing another career path I study art at the high school, and then I study at the Fine Arts Academy in Milan. I study set design, actually, for uh, television and theater. And then after that, I took a master in advanced digital art, when I really craft my skill uh, with 3D softwares and like digital software in general. And after the, the, the university, I started to work uh, in a studio that was mainly doing uh, event planning, like wedding planning and even events. And after that, I start a collaboration with a set designer uh, for Opera, which I'm still working with and collaborating. And on side, During those years, I've been working on video games, as I mentioned. I also collaborate on uh, some comics and some illustration for book covers and such stuff, like uh, exhibition in museum. Because uh, the set design branch, it's very wide and you can apply your knowledge to many different fields. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And uh, currently, what is your main branch of design that you're focusing on? And tell us about your experience from the start till now on it. And what made you interested in it? And of course, I'm in design, I'm talking about uh, your works in digital and 3D art. By that, I mean that. So my, my, my main jobs nowadays is uh, set design for theater. And uh, I approach that with uh, different softwares. Um, my main software that I use is SketchUp. I know it sounds weird, but uh, I think it's one of the best software for uh, set design, actually, to because I have some tools that really help you to figure out the dimensions and um, basically cover every aspect that you may need in a pipeline in a projection for theater. So uh, this is the main software that I use and then I use in conjunction with the Lumion, which is a real-time uh, render engine. And then I also use a SketchUp layout uh, to prepare all my works. On the side, I also know how to use ZBrush and Blender to make more complex and organic stuff. and. Uh, I tend to stay update with all the softwares and I, I try always to improve myself every project I put my hands on. So. All right. So tell us a bit more about 3D modeling and also digital art scene in Italy. So in Italy, there's... Um, kind of misconceptual on what is 3D art and what's digital art because still many people think that like the job is done by the computer so it's very hard sometimes to uh, try to explain what we are doing 
Um, actually, um, I know many uh, good artists and skilled artists from Italy that move abroad just because many of the production are based uh, in not in Italy, let's say, and uh, most of them are just move, moving abroad for this reason. Uh, I still live in Italy mainly because I work with a broad project freelancing, so I just have to move on set when the, the project is done. And um, to tell more about like my 3D work, um, I usually start uh, by sketching this idea and then build on top of those by using SketchUp, downloading many assets from a 3D library and try to compose uh, my, my final shot to present to director. And during this phase, uh, it's very important to keep in mind dimension, human relation with set, because what actually uh, I do, it's meant to be built after my draw, so it needs to be really uh, precise in terms of dimension and also in terms of proportion. All right. And how does your design process usually go? And by design process, I mean design for anything. I mean, what is the what is your structure of designing something? The thought process. The thought process is basically it's basically on research. Uh, could be anything. Uh, working on theater. Well, I can start talking my experience from theater, and then we can maybe talk about like concept art field. Yeah, sure, sure. That's good. Uh, so regarding theater, we start with the play. So usually we base the idea of the set of the on the story. So this is the main driving. Uh, guide for for the set but we also have to discuss with director that may have uh, different visions or change the time period of the opera and because a, a theater lived the time uh, where we live it designed itself by the time and so um, there's there could be many influences uh, and I'm pretty sure in the future we will have some show regarding uh, like this uh, pandemic moment that we are living at the moment. Uh, and by saying that um, after we have a discussion with, with the director and we have not designed but find what's uh, the the guides of the show, we started to doing research. Um, my work is heavily based on architecture, so I usually tend to start uh, by looking at some architecture uh, of the period that we decide uh, with the director, maybe searching for some, uh, some particular details to magnify on, inside the sets or using uh, as a pattern. So we experiment with a different uh, way and approach every work in a very unique uh, way. There's no a very step-by-step uh, -step process that I repeat every time. Well, of course, you start uh, with some sketch and then you go through 3D, but um, regarding the design process, it's very hard to dissect in small parts and tell what's review because every time, well, inspiration can come from anywhere. Maybe you are like a dentist and you read a magazine and you find a wonderful pictures that fit you and you just take it like a picture from your phones and you use it for the next set and this could be like your inspiration or you go for a trip. So there's so many things that are involved since, in my opinion, uh, what we design is driven by our experience. So 
the more we leave outside of our room where we design and draw, the better our design will be. Mm -hmm. And the next question is, I saw uh, some of your posts on Instagram and you seem to be interested in designing sci-fi armored vehicles and makes and basically, you know, cyborgs and stuff like that. What made you interested in that? So when I was studying uh, set design uh, in the university, I had, uh, well, I rewatch uh, Matrix, the movie, and I've been so shocked by by the pictures and the, the design that I was so fascinated with science fiction. Uh, early, I was like reading fantasy, more fantasy uh, books uh, and I wasn't very interested in uh, sci-fi, but then after rewatching Matrix after many years, uh, uh, I get uh, I get a shock on the sci-fi world, and I start designing on the cyberpunk style and discover all the little branch of uh, science fiction, and uh, I become more and more obsessed by that, and uh, that's that's what really drive uh, to the the game industry where I try to enter. So the first job that I get was on a sci-fi project where I have to design, um, it was a kind of tournament and we have to design this arena in a sci-fi styles. And also a few years later, when I finish my, my academy, uh, Tron Legacy came out and this was another big shock for me because it was not anymore just Matrix style in the terms of design, but science fiction could be also something really like pure and very uh, finished design. And this drove me in my choice. I cannot say that I'm really influenced um, my set design and theater work with the science fiction, but definitely it's something that I also have in my in the back of my mind when I design some set. So, for example, some lights, some choice, some details, and some pattern that you may create by using shadows. I may say they are driven by this uh, this science fiction love that I have. But on on side, to avoid to get bored by my theater works, I I developed this styles on doing like sci-fi robots, mecha vehicles. Uh, recently, I was very interesting in mixing a, a cowboy western with the cyborg. So I made a series of those, and I always try to keep interesting on what I'm working and study. So that's the main point. All right. Now, how, in your experience, how to, how to get noticed by other studios and how to present your portfolio and your resume as an artist? What tips and advice would you give for that? For a starting artist, I think a um, good idea is to have um, all your artwork uh, in uh, one place. For example, it could be uh, Beyonce or it could be our station. Um, and then uh, be active on other platforms such as uh, Instagram or uh, Facebook uh, or uh, maybe TikTok if you're interested in. And Basically, use those uh, to drive and point the attention on the main website you choose. Uh, for example, I've chosen um, our station, and uh, I use it because it's very easy to keep my work update and set in a professional way, so I can use it uh, to show to client uh, my uh, best work on the website and keep on the main page on my art station uh, all the works. And so many people with different uh, taste uh, and interest could be could find what they want. 
and uh, you know you can really not tell where the next uh, work uh, will come from because uh, nowadays people use different platforms so sometimes um, a work uh, uh, came from Pinterest, for example, and other times was come from our station, or maybe a friend tell to someone shows to someone my works, and so I get contact by them. But regarding um, social media and website, in my opinion, you should keep it in one place and refer all the social media that you have to do, to that place. So in this way, people don't get lost. All right. Now, what technologies and softwares do you mostly use for your works? I mean, I, I know you said SketchUp, I think, before, but I mean, in general, the things you use, what are they? Yeah, as we said, I use um, SketchUp and in conjunction with Lumion, that it's a real-time engine. And then I use uh, Blender, ZBrush, uh, I know how to use AutoCAD, of course, Photoshop for photo, ed photo editing and painting. And um, I've been using a Keyshot for a few years and Cinema 4D, 3D Code, 3D Studio Max, Maya. I basically try uh, all the main uh, 3D software package. But nowadays I use... Uh, Heavily Blender and uh, SketchUp for the reason that I mentioned earlier, and ZBrush because uh, ZBrush give me a lot of freedom uh, for express uh, myself with forms. It's really easy to push and pull forms and find in a very short time what you're looking for. I'm very interesting in uh, VR and I really want to put my hands on. <laughs> Oculus, but uh, I didn't have the chance yet. But uh, for sure, in the future, I really want to study Gravity Sketch and Oculus Medium, and maybe Quill. Still don't know, but uh, I'm really interested in uh, virtual reality. All right. Now, who are your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? So nowadays, uh, uh, there's uh, many uh, artists uh, that inspire me. But uh, if I have to tell you, back in the day when I was a kid, I, I, I was start, I've been start being fascinated by comic artists. And uh, I know maybe uh, it's Italian comic artist. His name is uh, Sergio Toppi. He's a very, very good artist. He mainly work with just the ink and black and white. And um, aside of that, uh, from comics, uh, there's uh, uh, Sandro Battaglia. That's another comic artist. And uh, till the uh, the university, I was really fascinated by old masters uh, from Renaissance period, like uh, Botticelli and uh, Caravaggio or um, Tiepolo, those type of artists, uh, or Parmigianino, for example. And after I finished my, um, my bachelor, I discovered digital art, and so I find amazing artists all over the world, uh, and which was more related to what I was doing. For example, like Craig Mullis, I remember when I found this painting, I was speechless because uh, you can actually paint really beautiful in, uh, in digital. Uh, but you know, I, I always care. Uh, in my backpack, all these old masters when I reference uh, for light colors uh, and from inspiration, I always look back at what have been done. Because if you focus too much on what's in, in your time, I think you can be very influenced in a positive way, but the problem is that you could uh, you can um, 
go inside the streams with all the other people that are coping from the same source. But if you look on different artists uh, in the past, you can mix it up with them and come up with new style or new idea that maybe no one talk about it or maybe it's not so seen nowadays. Yeah. And uh, what project are you working on right now that you can tell us about? What kind of project is it? Is it set design? Is it character design? So a few days ago, I just finished uh, to deliver an illustration for a book cover. Uh, but uh, at the moment, I'm working on a set uh, for theater for uh, Astana Opera in Kazakhstan. And uh, it's uh, Elisir d'Amore and should be played uh, in November if everything will be set for the date. Uh, we have worked uh, with the directors uh, and at the moment we, we came out with around 20 pictures for the show. For this type of show, we, we started... Uh, and we set uh, the time of the of the set we are designing in the period when uh, the composer write the opera and not the actual uh, time of the opera itself since uh, it was right in the 19th century the opera but the opera is based in the 16th century. We move everything in the 19th century. So the costume have been changed and the set have been changed due to this idea of the director. And based on that, you can uh, add many levels and um, use some, uh, some words inside the opera to change the idea um, and the perception of the people that is watching the, the show. Uh, regarding the set, it's a base uh, in a courtyard, uh, in a countryside house. Uh, so we try to bring nature inside the stage and we decide to make this a very big arch in the background and to put uh, a screen just be behind those arch and use projection to expand the space of the stage so we have more depth uh, on the stage and we create this kind of a, a open air uh, panorama for the background All right. And uh, what area besides that you're working on right now are you interested to explore and learn? Uh, I've been always fascinated by literature, and I really want to uh, really want to learn how to write properly. I've uh, read some uh, short story in my free times. So I think it's a good exercise if you are a creative person and also, if you're like very uh, interesting in design and drawing, to write your own uh, stories because this will uh, help your fantasy, and it won't cost much in terms of um, uh, experience because uh, you know everyone can tell a story, either if it's good or bad, but it doesn't require a skill. To, to write, you know, everyone knows how to write, so everyone can do it. After many years, you can become good at it, like you can become good at drawing, but still the, uh, the idea to create a concept without uh, drawing, but just uh, uh, writing, it's very powerful because after two or three years, you can come back, reread it, your story, and come up with completely different idea on that because this is the real powers of book. Since you don't put it on paper and draw what you think the, the, the words say, they could be everything. So I think uh, literature and writing, it's skills that uh, 
it's really important to craft and I hope to have some times in the future to practice more. All right, with all that being said and done, to conclude all we discussed, give us a roadmap for someone who is zero in design and wants to get to a place you are in terms of skill set. Basically, for someone who's interested in 3D modeling and digital art in general, and where to start, what are the best tools, software, courses, anything that might come to your mind. So nowadays, there are many, many, many content uh, online that you can find easily play, paid or free on YouTube, so on every platform. If you're more on books, you can buy books, uh, you can purchase video, or you can follow some mentorships. It's very up to you. What I think it's really missing nowadays that this, like, oceans of tutorials it's really missing like the real core fundamentals of uh, studying and by saying that um, talking about my personal experience coming from the academy the fine arts academy that time the three years that they it took me to to be graduated really teach me many stuff that I could not compress in a tutorial series uh, that I can watch on YouTube. The people that I met, the teacher that I've met, what I've studied, and the type of studying that I've done. Because when you go, for example, to a Fine Arts Academy, you have to study history of art, you have to study technical drawing, you can study painting, you can study whatever you want. But you will have to keep it for six months. While nowadays you can buy a tutorial and you can watch it and one week you could be done with the project and maybe you learn a lot, but uh, probably on the long term, it's, uh, it's very poorly what you can really get from that tutorial. So I think nowadays uh, it's important to have a good base uh, in, um, well, a good theory. And uh, regarding software, you know, nowadays very famous and popular, it's Blender, it's free, you can use it, you can render it, you can use it for animation, uh, motion graphics, uh, 3D modeling, and uh, it's really easy and really powerful to use it. If you want to work uh, as a set designer for theater, I may recommend you SketchUp, or sometimes in, uh, in cinema, they use uh, uh, Rhinoceros, because it's a CAD base, or Fusion 360 is another CAD uh, software that nowadays has been used uh, in uh, movie production. And of course, uh, Photoshop, it's very important. And keep an eye on um, virtual reality with Oculus and the other VR set there's out there. All right. Thanks, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Okay. That uh, that's all. Yep. And. Uh...